What's up everyone? It's Kelly and today I've got another Swatcher review for you. So today we're going to be talking about a brand that I haven't talked about in a long time and that is Morgan Taylor. So if you haven't heard of them before, they are a mainstream salon nail polish brand and all of their polishes are five free, meaning they're free of five of the potentially harmful ingredients that can be found in nail polish. They are vegan, meaning they do not use any animal derived ingredients and they're also cruelty free, meaning they do not test their products on animals. So I'm going to be sharing a bunch of polishes from them today. I've actually got two collections to go over. So we've got their Plant Reputation collection, and then we have their I Want to Dance with Somebody collection. So I'm going to show you the swatches of both of those. And then we do have some similar shades within the two collections. So I'll do a little comparison as well. And then we can talk a little bit more about pricing, availability, my thoughts on Morgan Taylor in general. So let's just start with the swatches. So as with all of my swatch interview videos, I am using base coat underneath all of my swatches just to protect my natural nail and prevent knee stains. Today I'm using the Cuccio base coat. So we'll start off with the Plaid Reputation collection, which actually came out for autumn 2022, but I feel like we have a lot of nice basics here that you can really wear anytime. This first shade is called Tailored For You, and it is a medium light dusty sky blue. And as soon as I applied this one, I really remembered what it is that I love about Morgan Taylor. They have such a nice formula and everything gives me almost one coat opacity, if not fully one coat opacity. And it is just so smooth smooth. It's so workable. It reminds me a little bit of OPI in that it's thin, but it's really opaque a lot of the time. And again, it's a basic color, but it's really pretty on the nails and I can't get enough of this formula. Next up, we have the shade Tweet Me, <laughs> which is a great name. And this one is a super light buff beige shade. It has a little touch of like a peachy undertone to it. So you do get a little bit of that kind of pinkiness. And I really thought that this was gonna end up being a three coater, but I did get full coverage with two coats on my nails. Now, keep in mind, my nails are fairly short. If you have longer nails, you'll probably need a third. But again, I was just really impressed with the opacity here. It applied so nicely as well. Moving on, we had the shade Will You Love Me? And this one is another nude beige kind of color. This one is, again, a little bit on that peachy, leaning towards pink side. And again, a really nice formula. It actually covered up my visible nail line in the first coat, but I did need two coats for full coverage. But again, I thought it looked really gorgeous. It's a nice thin formula, so it doesn't feel like you have too much on your nails, but you do get opacity pretty quickly with these. Next Next up, we have the shade Tartan the Interruption, and this one is a gorgeous deep cranberry color. Now, I think it looks a little bit more red on me, and I think that's because I have very yellow undertones, but I think it actually leans a little bit more pinky in the bottle, so it might be a little bit more pinky on you if you're cooler toned. But I was really excited about this shade because usually with these deeper red or magenta kind of colors, it tends to have a more jelly-like formula, which don't get me wrong, I love a jelly but I also love a nice deep cream finish. And that's what I got with this one. It's fully a cream. Again, it covers up the visible nail line in that first coat. Honestly, get pretty full coverage in that first coat, but I applied two for the swatch. Moving on, we have the shade It's All About the Twill. And this one is a really dusty, soft purple base that actually has this pearlized white shimmer going throughout it. And that actually gives it that brush strokey finish. And I personally love a nice brush stroke finish. I think it looks so gorgeous. I think it elongates the nails a little bit, especially if you have shorter nails. And I think with this one, it's subtle enough that you don't have to be neat with your brush strokes in order to get that look. Ends up diffusing a little bit. So it looks really nice, even if you're not a particularly careful person at a applying your polish. So I was really impressed with this one. I wasn't expecting to love it, but I did end up loving it because of that finish. And then the last polish in this first collection is called Follow Suit. And this one is a black polish that has a very subtle blue gray shimmer running throughout. Now, honestly, in my swatch, this just looks fully black unless the light hits it. And I think that is pretty accurate for how it looks in real life. It's such a deep color. It really swallows up a lot of that light shimmery color. But when you do hit it with direct lighting, you do get a little touch of that special shimmer in there. So it's really just just basically a black polish that has a little extra something to make it different. And I really like it. 
So now let's move on to the second collection. We've got the I Want to Dance with Somebody collection, and this was released for winter 2022. This first shade is called Blazing Up the Charts, and it is this absolutely stunning red cream. Again, it has that full cream formula, not that jelly-like formula that I'm used to with reds. And as soon as I applied this, I felt like I was going to be absolutely in love with it. I thought it was going to be a favorite of mine, but when I removed it, this stained my nail so badly that I don't think I'm ever going to wear this one again. It's such a stunning red, but I really hate staining my nails, so it's just not worth it to me, and I'm very sad about that. Next up, we have the shade Signature Sound, and this is a super light beige cream finish, and I actually thought this one looked incredibly similar to the beige in the last collection, so you will see a side-by-side -side comparison at the end of the swatches, but I do think they're a little bit different now having seen them side-by-side. -side. This one is a little bit more neutral, leaning into a more grayish kind of tone. You can see almost a little bit of like this greenish undertone to it. And I thought this one was fully opaque in two coats, but I wasn't sure if it translated as a two coater on camera. So I applied a third one just in case, but I still think I would wear this one in two coats because it was full coverage on my short nails in two. But yeah, another gorgeous color. I think that almost like gray green undertone makes it more fall winter to me. Next up, we have the shade Certified Platinum, and this is a really interesting metallic color. It's this really champagne kind of shimmery foil, but when you apply it, you can actually see there's a couple more levels to it than you would expect from the bottle. So it actually looks like there's almost this warmer, almost light brown jelly kind of base. And then as you build it up to full coverage, which for me took two coats, you see a lot of that champagne glitter in there. So it's really interesting how it hits the light. It almost looks a little bit more silvery, but without that direct lighting, you can see around sort of my cuticle area, it's a little bit more of that beige light brown kind of color. So it's really pretty and it's actually really dimensional. Next up, we have the shade Command the Stage. And this is another shade that honestly, I was not thinking that I would like so much. It looks so interesting in the bottle. It's almost hard to tell what it is, but it's actually, again, this sort of brown, almost reddish jelly base. And then it's packed with this shimmer that looks really multi-dimensional. So it it looks like an orangey kind of gold, but around the edges, it almost looks a little bit more green. And then at extreme angles, it looks almost brownish. So again, we get this sort of dimensional shimmer in here where when the light hits it, it looks like one color. And then in the shade, it looks like a totally different color. So you can really see both that bright gold and that deeper brown kind of shade in my swatch. And honestly, I love it. And then we have the shade that I was predictably the most excited for. This one is called Belt It Out and it is a gorgeous purple. It actually has this like warmer, almost fuchsia kind of jelly base. And then it is packed with this very cool toned purple shimmer that almost looks blue at some angles. And then even further, we've also got some silver holographic mini and micro glitters running throughout. So there's just so much going on with this. It starts to look a little warmer when you first apply it, but once you build it up to full coverage, it looks nice and cool toned. We get that extra rainbow sparkle of the hollow in there. And I just think it is a really fun party on the nails. I love a purple nail polish. I especially love a cool tone purple and I love hollow. And last but definitely not least, we have the shade Record Breaker, which is another black cream, but this one has a silvery shimmer running throughout. And I thought this was going to be very similar to the other black where it just mostly looked black, but then you could see the shimmer in more direct lighting. But this one actually ended up being so gorgeous. It looks like this black glittering night sky. And the cool thing about this one is that it was fully a one coat cream on me. It gave me perfect coverage in one coat. I would absolutely just wear this as a one coater on my nails. I was so impressed with the coverage. The other black felt like it was almost there in one coat, but this one was truly there. I love that little subtle glitter. I think it adds so much to the polish and I have no idea how they made it so opaque, but made the glitter shine through so nicely. So here are all of the polishes together. And instead of doing the two collections next to each other, I am just combining them in sort of color order because we do have a few similar shades. You can see with those two beiges, one of them definitely leans a little bit more warm and one of them leans a little bit more into that gray green kind of territory. So they are very similar, but they have different undertones. And then again, with those black shades, we've got one that mostly just looks black.
black and then we've got that very subtle blue gray kind of shimmer in there and then we have the black that has the more glittery I don't want to say micro glitters because they're even smaller than that but the little silver glitters that are kind of scattered throughout that make it look so starry and yeah overall I think this is a nice collection of basics we get a few exciting pops of interesting colors and I think one thing that they've done really well with these two collections especially with the winter shades is making polishes that feel basic but actually have more going on in them so that when you're applying them you can really just appreciate what goes into the polish and what makes it look just a little bit different from other things you may own so yeah those are the polishes overall I really enjoy Morgan Taylor I think in general they're pretty underrated I feel like people just don't talk about them that much and honestly I feel like I don't really reach for them that much but whenever I use them I'm like this is a great quality brand so I'm not really sure why that is what it is about them but I feel like they're actually really great polishes especially their basics I think they're just great quality they're so opaque and I also really do like their brush I think it's very beginner friendly like I said there were a couple of shades that were really similar between the two collections which I thought was kind of weird considering that they were released one after another but I guess they're different enough that you could in theory own all of them I'm just not sure that it's entirely necessary one thing I will say is that red shade from the I want to dance with somebody collection was massively staining and a lot of times people refer to a polish as a staining polish if it stains their cuticles now the way that I remove my polishes I do have actually a nail polish 101 video on that but I always try to soak the nail and then wipe it so that I'm not actually touching the cuticle and I think that actually makes a huge difference with polishes not staining but in this case this polish actually stained the nail itself so definitely not ideal I don't recommend that one and honestly I'm probably I don't think I'm ever going to use that one again just because I don't like having stained nails the color is really pretty I just don't think it's worth it for a basic red but other than that one I thought they were really great polishes I loved the colors I loved the finishes I always say that Morgan Taylor reminds me a lot of OPI I think it's a very similar formula and a very similar quality but for whatever reason I just don't reach for them as often so all of the Morgan Taylor polishes come in 15 milliliter bottles they do have a wide flat brush that has a rounded tip which I think is a very beginner friendly brush it makes application a lot easier and it makes cleanup a little bit less intense I always get mine from HB Beauty Bar which is a nail polish retailer and there they retail for eight dollars USD each but you can also use the discount code Kelly to get 22% off your order so I will link that down below but yeah I'm curious to hear what you guys think if you're a fan of Morgan Taylor and if not why not and also I'm curious which of these two collections did you prefer is there one polish in particular that stood out to you leave it all in the comments we can chat about it if you enjoy my swatch and review videos please give this one a thumbs up it lets me know I'm doing a good job and if you're not already subscribed to my channel please consider subscribing I put on new videos every Tuesday Friday and Sunday I also have a second YouTube channel my vlog channel where I show you a little bit more of my life outside of nail polish reviews and I also have a podcast which is available on all streaming platforms but I just recently made a YouTube channel for it so I'll link that up in the cards as well it's not nail polish related it's actually movie related but it's a lot of fun so definitely check that out and of course a huge shout out to my supporters on patreon my royal astronomer Amanda M as well as my cosmic admirals Rocketman's daughter Paula Ken and Rosie I really appreciate your support and I'll see you all in my next video bye Today's fun fact question comes from Patreon supporter Bake Up Little Susie, and Bake Up Little Susie wants to know, what change have you made in your life that you're the proudest of? Ooh, I don't know how deep I should get here. <laughs> in general, for me, one piece of advice I always like to give myself is whenever I'm comfortable and happy, but I start to wonder if things could be better if X, Y, Z, I always try to push myself to do that thing because I feel like there have been a lot of times in my life where I've had that exact situation where I'm comfortable, I'm complacent, but then I'm thinking like, ooh, I wish things were a little bit better, but I don't want to leave the comfort of where I am right now. And every time I've done it, I think it has improved my life drastically. So I think those are the thoughts that come to mind for me. Obviously, that's not the case for everybody. And I think it is a big risk to step outside of your comfort zone and make a big change, whether it be a career change or a relationship change, or maybe even just like a friend breakup or something like that, or moving. <laughs> I know it can always be a huge risk, but every time I have started to wonder about that, I feel like it has always 
paid off, maybe not in the way that I've expected it to pay off specifically, but I feel like I've never regretted making those changes in my life. The biggest one that I can think of, I mean, obviously I've made a lot of big changes. You know, I was comfortable in New Jersey, but I wanted to try somewhere else. Now I live in Vegas and I'm very happy here. I've changed careers a few times in my life and I think it's always been to my benefit. So I always appreciated that. But yeah, I think the biggest one to me has been, I always think of this as like a big fork in the road moment in my life, is when I was living in Atlanta, Georgia for a few years, I felt like my life was on a very specific path and I was scared to leave that path because I wasn't sure if leaving it would be worse, but I ended up actually making just a huge 180. I changed my career. I moved to New Jersey by myself, had a lot of friend and relationship breakups and I can honestly say that that was the best decision I have ever made in my life. I always think about like how crazy would it have been if I continued on that one path. I just can't imagine being happy in that life. And I did take a huge risk and it was definitely hard to do, but it has paid off so much. I am so much happier than I honestly ever thought I could be in my entire life. So I think that was like the biggest change for me. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of crazy because I was on YouTube for the duration of that. Obviously I took like a little filming break, but I was, you know, creating videos at that time. So it's kind of interesting to see who I was then versus who I am now. I, I mean, I don't think I really shared too, too much of what was going on on the internet just because, you know, out of respect for other people. Yeah, I think that was the best decision I've ever made in my life. It was a huge fork in the road moment, like I said, and I just, I was comfortable where I was, but I knew I was never gonna be truly happy. And now I am just so happy. I really never thought that I would feel this way in my life and it's actually kind of wild to me it's it's wild to look back and think that I was happy with where I was then but yeah this is all just like my own personal I don't you know recommend doing anything crazy but I will say even the times that I have made big changes in my life where it seemed like it was a bad decision because I didn't get what I thought I wanted I feel like it's always ended up being what I needed in life so Every time it starts to happen to me, that's that's something that I do. But yeah, I would say that that one big change was a, a pretty hefty one, completely changed the trajectory of my life, and uh, it was the best decision of my life. So there you go. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll talk about it in more detail in a vlog because I feel like I have shared some information online, but I, I really haven't delved into, you know, exactly what happened in my life to cause that change. So yeah, I don't know. I just, I'm a, I like taking risks. I like being a risk taker. If anybody wants to share some big changes that they made in their life to improve it, you can leave it all in the comments below and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.